For the next speaker uh, for this session, I would like to invite Mr. Dilip Adisanaika on stage. He is the director for APL Logistics. Hi, good morning. Uh, Rohan and uh, CMEC team, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to share some thoughts. So my uh, topic uh, is uh, the logistics industry trends uh, and innovations. I mean, it's a vast topic uh, to cover in five to seven minutes. I'll try to put some context uh, so that we understand how we position ourselves as we go towards the next decade or two. Uh, to start with, I think uh, I, I, I extracted the video from the World Economic Forum. Uh, this should uh, you know, put some context for our discussions today. So uh, to understand the trends, I think it is important to understand what is actually driving this change. Uh, there are five, uh, five areas which I believe, I mean, there are, this is not an exhaustive list, of course, uh, that is actually driving these changes, what is happening around us. First is the, the reconfiguration of the value chain, that is, uh, uh, we have seen during the pandemic that the, how the supply chains were disrupted and people realizing that the requirement uh, to, to near show, sometimes reshore it, bring the manufacturing back so that they, they balance out their supply chain. Uh, when, you, when you say value chain and the supply chain, I'll give us a simple example for you to understand. Uh, a, a drug required at, uh, for example, there is a serious cancer patient and he needs a particular injection uh, in Sri Lanka and if it cannot be brought on time, uh, the value is uh, much more than the price you have to pay for it. So you understand the, the, the value uh, becomes a key uh, component in uh, the driving forces. Uh, second, I think probably uh, not second, probably one of the key uh, or number one should be sustainability. Uh, there is a lot of drive towards sustainability. I mean, today we are more looking at a compliance angle, you know, because it's part of governance, uh, corporate governance to be a good, uh, you know, social responsibility uh, uh, organization. But it is, uh, end of the day, 
it is part of our responsibility. It is uh, the life on earth that matters. Uh, logistics contributes uh, significantly uh, to the CO emission in the world from the ships that travel, from the truck, uh, to the warehouses, and from the wastage. Industry consolidation is another aspect uh, which we see happening. Uh, again, you know, the, the pandemic accelerated that uh, a lot of small timers found it difficult to survive. It can be cash flow problems. It can be that they did not have uh, enough uh, financing uh, to, to adapt and uh, re reconfigure their business. Uh, whatever the reason, uh, so, some uh, big uh, players in the market who are cash-rich companies either bought them or and did the asset stripping and got rid of them, uh, got rid of the competition, so that uh, we see uh, a few of big players uh, uh, coming into action. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the story of our life when we are in uh, logistics, thinner margins. Uh, and the cost, I think, uh, even Santil uh, touched on this, how the costs are going. Our margins in the industry is generally, uh, generally uh, EBIT in the range of 3 to 4 percent. And uh, Santil also touched about the finance cost. Imagine that hitting you. Uh, the survival uh, is actually at risk. So that's why uh, a lot of uh, efficiency, a lot of disruption is happening. So the last but not least is uh, the digital transformation, how, how we leverage on it, and uh, how, how uh, the, the logistics industry is evolving through that. Again, this is not uh, an exhaustive list. It's, it's, it's the top 10 trends uh, as, as recognized by uh, many in the world. Uh, I'm not going through one by one, <clears throat> but you know, Internet of Things, uh, I mean, uh, sometimes when you look at it, you might know that we, we know all of these, but end of the day, sometimes we, we think all is one, Internet of Things. Uh, but but it, it, in its true sense, Internet of Things is like, you know, the, even the, the devices which uh, enable to capture the data and also the devices which you can take the output out. So in a day, uh, it says that there's uh, 2.5 quintillion uh, number of uh, bytes uh, being absorbed by the internet. Uh, that means even your, switch, your mobile phone, when it's switched off, uh, it's tracking where you are. Uh, when you are talking, your mobile phone is listening. Uh, and when you go to your YouTube, you will see something you discussed about is appearing in your YouTube. So this is happening around us. <coughs> uh, and uh, this is, uh, so, uh, the, the data needs to be hosted somewhere. So a lot of big data is collected. So then, then big data analytics come into play. Uh, a lot of software is being developed to analyze this data, analyze the trends, understand the needs, the changing trends, uh, as well as creating new values to uh, the consumers. Uh, cloud computing is, you know, it's become, as, as the space becomes more, you, have, you create a common space, so you pay as you go, uh, or you pay as you use it, uh, so bringing in flexibility to the industry. Uh, then we have AI, we, we all know what AI is doing, machine learning, uh, 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 in terms of uh, gaining efficiency, in, in terms of uh, understanding new trends, uh, in terms of uh, implementing new processes, AI is being used. And then comes the blockchain, where we, we bring in the smart contracts and uh, freight tracking systems. Uh, the, the elimination of the trusted third party, so-called, uh, you know, uh, uh, the reliance of a banking system or a legal system uh, is evolving, uh, I mean, uh, and uh, it might take time, but uh, these are things that, uh, you know, the industry partners are experimenting and some of them are successfully using. Uh, autonomous vehicles, again, uh, something that we, we see that is entering into uh, the logistics space. Uh, I think it's YMO. Uh, the parent company is Alphabet, uh, that is Google's parent company. They are 
trying out uh, a taxi company, uh, a fully commercial taxi company in, uh, in Arizona. So these things are becoming uh, real. Warehouse automation is, is, you know, I mean, uh, anybody who is in the industry, you know, I mean, uh, the number of uh, softwares we are using uh, to manage our inventory, uh, to optimize our inventory are uh, ever increasing. Uh, robotics, uh, I think if, if you look at the industrial evolution, I mean, I, I uh, did mention about supply chain 4.0 in the previous slide. So, I mean, uh, industry is going through uh, transformations. First, we found the steam engine that is in 1750s, that is called Industry 1.0, and then Industry 2.0 came in with electricity and mass production. And then uh, in 1950s, we saw the robots coming in, uh, the computers coming in. Uh, but now what's happening is the digital transformation. That is a supply chain 4.0. The the, all these are being linked. Uh, so when you say a ro uh, ro robotics being applied, it's not necessarily big arms uh, and big machines working. It can be a simple thing as a macro. Uh, just to share a uh, simple success story from from where I come from, we, we had uh, a document uh, which we have to check six uh, fields. And uh, the each document had about 400 line items. And we get per day about three to 400 documents. Uh, this had to be manually checked. So a simple macro has taken out about 10 hours, 10 man hours into about 30 minutes uh, for a week. So this is uh, what's happening, and this is actually uh, being implemented in industry. Last mile services, uh, drones are something that, you know, uh, being tested. Uh, it's, uh, they are being evolved. So this is uh, definitely going to, uh, you know, uh, enter the industry uh, in a more practical sense in future, as we see. Elastic logistics, again, very platform-based, cloud-based, as we see, uh, where uh, it's more crowdsourcing that we, we, we enable uh, a lot of partners to collaborate uh, in one platform. For an example, a warehouse a, a, a platform can be for warehousing where you only pay based on your usage. As the, the, you can uh, select where you want to store it, in which warehouse, uh, and what that's the amount of space you require. Likewise for the fleets, if you, if you don't want to, you know, uh, tie up your money uh, in, in fixed capital or fixed cost, uh, you, you always have these options. So these options are coming in to support uh, the developing trends of, uh, you know, on the impact on our margins. So th this is happening uh, as it is important for us in the industry to understand how to, to play against. Uh, this is not the framework, this is kind of a framework, you know, uh, a framework that we can kind of understand where to position ourselves as we go on. Uh, there are two things changing, uh, that is the, the, the scale of change and the speed of change. The, if you are, the, the scale of change in, in the in specific space you are occupying, if the, the space uh, the, the, the scale plus uh, your speed of change is significantly high, I think uh, then it's time to think of disruption. Uh, that's why we see a lot of startups uh, looking at disrupting the market. And that's definitely uh, going to happen and uh, it's definitely happening in the market. Uh, the other th uh, three quadrants you see, uh, it's uh, I mean either your, your Speed is higher, uh, but still uh, the, the scale is less. Or it can be your scale is higher, uh, but uh, the speed is less. Uh, or it can be both, uh, you know, fairly at a lower rate. So in this space, it is still crucial, right? I think, uh, again, I, I go back to Santhil, you know. There's, the, not, there's no major changes you'll be able to do, but you have to be watchful of the market and see uh, what, what technology to adapt and to what scale it should be adapted. So that's, in a nutshell, uh, how I see uh, the future of logistics and trends. Thank you very much. We can discuss further in the, the discussions. Thank you.